Have you ever thought about how two individuals, the same exact age, standing side by side, can look totally different? Think about that for a moment, and we'll be right back in this next episode of Optimal Living Starts Here. I'm Versandra Kenny Brew, your host. Optimal Living. Welcome back. We're here for the Optimal Living Starts Here show, and I'm super excited that we're going to talk about something that every person, whether you are a veteran or family member of a veteran, or just someone who is living in your skin age 30 or above, you're gonna wanna know about what we're talking about today. And the topic is secrets to aging gracefully. You probably wonder why would we be talking about such a topic today? In fact, you're probably wondering why I'm talking about such a topic today. And let me tell you something. As I am preparing to celebrate my 60th revolution around the sun, I have thought about some of the things that people have asked me over the years about the aging process. Generally, it starts something like, oh my God, how is it that you are 50 and you look like you're 30? Or maybe they'll say something like, how is it that you can run and walk and do all the things that you're doing and you are 60? Well, I'm going to share some of those secrets with you today, but let's talk right now about aging in general in the United States of America. I've got a few things that I wanted to share that I found that are statistics that I think will be beneficial with helping you understand this whole topic of aging. What I learned was the statistics report that the number of Americans age 65 and older is projected to increase 47% by 2050. Think about that for a moment. If you consider all of the individuals who are age 65 and over right now, and you increase that by, let's see, I'm trying to give you a visual so you can just imagine, but 40% is almost 50%. So think about that. If there's 100,000, you're talking about 40,000, I mean 40%, that means you're adding 40,000 more who will be age 65 and older. If you're 25 or 20, that probably means nothing at all to you. But for those who are 30 and over, it could mean a big deal. Let me think about, or let me share some of the areas in which this might really show up in your community, in your household, and even in your world. First of all, let's think about food. We're just looking at the basic things that any individual needs to survive in life. Food is at the top of that list. If you have a parent or grandparent that's 65 and older, and you think about how they get their food into their house, into their refrigerator. Think about before the COVID pandemic, the only option you really had for groceries was to go into a grocery store, walk around the aisles with a cart and just pick up the things that you might want. Well, then we got Instacart and all the other options where we had different, I think, organizations or businesses that set up these options for you to use a mobile app or your phone and order your groceries in advance. And in that case, 
someone would bring those groceries to your home and deliver them to you. But think about a person who is 65 and older and does not have access to a smartphone. Or maybe even they have an access, but they just don't know how to use it that well to download an app in order to order those groceries and have them delivered to their home. This means a lot to me because over the last five years, I've been caring for my dad who's now 90. And I think about 30 years ago, would he have been able to order his groceries and have them delivered? And the answer is absolutely not. It's not because he is not still alive and not functioning and can't do things on his own, but it has to do with the idea that he was born in the 1930s. And this whole idea of computers and apps and things like that was non-existent. Almost his entire life, it's been non-existent. And now we're asking this person who is over age 65 to bring this into his world and make it something that is really, <laughs> he can't even fathom the idea of using this tool that so many of us use without thinking twice about it. Let's look at another thing that we know people that are aging might need on a daily basis, and that would be shelter. Thinking about shelter today in the world that we're living in, in 2024, we can see that there's a lot of changes that have occurred over the past 10 years or so as it relates to shelter for those who are aging. In fact, there's this new thing, this term that they're using called aging in place. This is something that is designed for those individuals who may be seniors and they don't necessarily have a lot of family there caring for them. In fact, when I think about my aging process, I'm a person that has no children or no close family that would be there to care for me. So I would be looking for housing that would be friendly to a person like myself that would give me the option of caring for myself and being able to have a walkable community where I can get to those destinations that I want to go to easily and effortlessly. Well, in those aging in place type of housing units, you will find that there are individuals that are say 55 to maybe 65 and they live a very active lifestyle. They can get up and get into the van and go to the theater, go to a movie, go to dinner, enjoy life with the community that's aging around them and they will have like-minded individuals enjoying that journey with them. But once you get past 65 and you go to 75 and you start considering the health challenges that come with an individual who is aging, especially if they have chronic illnesses like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. Well, they may have a little bit more challenge with doing some of the active lifestyle activities. So they might need a little different care, maybe even having a nurse on site that can come and assist them with their medications and making sure they're taking on, taking on time. Also making sure that they are having good healthy meals provided for them that will support the illnesses that they are living with in a way that they are eating the foods that help them to live more productively and actually have a healthy quality of life. But let's look even deeper. Let's look at transportation. Now that might not be one of those things that's in the Maslow's law of hierarchy, but transportation means a lot in 2024. We all have to get from one place to the next, right? Well, for us who may be very open to technology, we'll pick up our phone in a heartbeat and just do a couple of tap, 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 now we have an Uber or a Lyft coming to our door to pick us up. 
That has become the norm for us in this world today. But when you're thinking about that person that's aging, will they have the ability to pick up their phone and do the exact same thing? We know that the apps are changing often. There's updates that happen on these phones that some people who are aging don't even know how to make sure it takes place, right? So when we think about that and we think about what happens when you don't make those updates, what can happen to your device if you are not really abreast of the things that are needed to keep it working and functioning properly, you might end up having you know, different things like somebody putting a worm or something on your device and then because you opened up an email that you shouldn't have and then you found out something's been downloaded on your device and keeping you from using it in the proper manner. So that person that is aging and that does not have the patience nor the cognitive ability to go through all of the process of making sure that their devices are functioning properly, they might have some issues with that transportation coming to their door and picking them up. But why would they even need transportation coming to the door, you might ask? Well, once you age just a little bit, you might find that it's necessary to have another set of eyes. <laughs> you might need glasses. Your vision may be impaired, so that means that you are not able to drive on the road in the same way that a person that has full vision. Think about some of the accidents that take place on the road today. Sometimes it's those younger individuals who may be less experienced on the road, but we have to know that there's often times when there's older individuals on the road who have lost their ability to drive in the same way that they did maybe 10 years ago. So we do have to consider that as an option and an area that may need a little bit of extra support. Now, I've been sharing with you various reasons why a person who is aging may decline and need additional assistance, but let's flip that whole thing around just for a little bit. Because as we talk about aging gracefully, we're not only talking about the challenges a person might have that's aging, we're talking about solutions and prevention and ways to allow people who are aging to live their absolute best life. And I must say on purpose. So as we think about that, I wanna just take you for a little walk down memory lane. This show has been airing on Bean TV for a little over two years now. And we have shared with you some of the amazing holistic lifestyle options that anybody can embrace to help them live a more full and active, and I would just say optimal life. But in this flashback, these moments of flashback, you will see that there are some options for you from massage therapy and keeping your body more functioning and better having more mobility and better circulation, that is an option. We've talked about yoga and meditation and how you can find those walks along the river, just contemplating the joy and beauty of life, maybe sitting down on a blanket beside the river and just kind of watching the birds as they fly around and the animals and all the insects even, that's mindfulness. It's a practice that requires you to be a little bit limber because just to get down on that blanket on the ground can be a challenge if you have a little bit of a mobility challenge. But we're gonna look at some of the other things. We talked about, oh, yoga, that's definitely one. And we're talking about moving your body having the flexibility and, and mobility 
and the breathing that comes with that because if you're not breathing, you're not doing yoga. So you're seeing some of those flashbacks behind me. Just some of the ideas that we have shared over the past two years. And I want you to know that we will continue to do just this on this show, Optimal Living Starts Here, because we are here for you and your family members. We say that this show is for active duty military veterans and their family members, and we support you on your journey to optimal living. And we want you to know that you can continue to come right here to this station at this time and find these wonderful options for living well. So I've shared a lot today about aging gracefully, but please know that this is not the end. We're going to talk about aging gracefully, mind, body, and spirit throughout this series. And we look forward to helping you on your journey to optimal living and well being. Thank you.